Hello and welcome to the ONTV Cooking Show. I'm Joey Tysick, Production Coordinator here at ONTV. And today I brought along my wife, today, Marie, and we're going to cook some steaks and potatoes. And so I brought a couple of porterhouse steaks and we have a couple of russet potatoes that we're going to cook up and then mash afterwards. So uh, Marie's going to kind of take over the mashed potatoes. I'm going to take over the steak. So Marie, what do we got here for these potatoes? All right. So first things first, we got our russet potatoes. We went with three of them here just for the two of us. And we peeled them already. You don't have to peel your russet potatoes, but unless you want the skins in your mashed potatoes, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Then just have some table salt, pepper, garlic powder, I put it in just about everything, some milk, and then just some regular old butter. And that's all you need to make them. So we're going to go ahead and cut these up and get them in the pot and boil it. Okay. Should you do anything special when you uh, cut the potatoes up? Just when you cut them, make sure you're cutting them into pieces so that they can evenly boil. So you'll just cut them up and dice them into some smaller quarters. You don't want them too big or they're just gonna take forever to cook and no one wants to wait for mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. So get them all nice, finely chopped up here. Make sure you be careful with the big knives. <laughs> yes. Watch your fingers. But they don't have to be pretty because we're gonna mash them at the end anyway. So right. just chop them up as best you can. And once we do that, we'll throw them in the water. And then how long are we going to boil them? They're going to go in the water. So I already have the water on the stove and it is getting ripped to a boil. And you'll just put them in for about 15 to 20 minutes until they are tender to the touch with a fork. So once you can poke a fork through them, they are done. Okay. We're hoping that those will be done almost perfectly in timed with by the time we're done with this steak. So hopefully we can time everything correctly. That'd be nice. <laughs> All right, so we'll throw them on the plate and I'm going to throw them in the boiling water. Okay, so while she's doing that, I am going to start with the steaks. I'm going to turn on this burner just so I can get that started. And then I'm going to have my steaks here and we'll get to the sauce afterwards. So usually with my steaks, I just have a couple of porterhouses here and we're going to season these with some salt and pepper. Nothing too fancy. And we're just going to generously put it on there because some of it's going to fall off after we cook it. So throw some of that on there. Throw some salt. No big deal. I usually use a little less salt because I'm sensitive to it, but that's just me. And we want to get the other side. So we're going to throw some more pepper on here. Again, we're going to get more flavors from the sauce as well afterwards, but a good seasoned steak can never go wrong, in my opinion. Um, and then I also grabbed some avocado oil. Avocado oil has a really high smoke point, so hopefully we won't smoke ourselves out of the building. And uh, I'm gonna put some oil in the pan here. Get that going. And just gonna wash it around a little bit. Then these steaks should be good to go. They've been sitting out uh, it's usually recommended that you want to pull your steaks out, let them thaw, and then even when you put them back in the fridge, pull them out for like 20, 30 minutes just to let them get back to room temperature so that they can cook a little bit better. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to set them in, down in there. And then we're going to try to do about two, one to two minutes on each side. Usually the quicker you turn your steaks, the better. Uh, so I'm going to wash my hands real quick and then we'll add a couple other extra flavors into the steaks. I'm going to grab a little butter, just going to spoon it in there. doesn't have to be anything measured out or anything. We're just going to throw it in the pan, let that melt down a little bit. And I'm going to turn this up. That's going to go in there. Perfect. And then I love some rosemary in my steaks. So I grabbed some rosemary and crushed up some garlic. So we're going to throw that in the pan as well. Get all these different flavor profiles going. How much rosemary and garlic are we using? Uh, I don't know. I grabbed a few stems of rosemary and uh, I grabbed 
what do we have, like four cloves of garlic. So you let those kind of sit in there, let everything heat up. And uh, we're going to rotate these. Probably good to rotate them now already. You can't really over rotate steaks in my opinion um, because you want them to cook as evenly as possible. So even though we didn't get a whole lot going on that first side, we'll just stick to the same routine. So you can already see they're a little bit browned there, uh, but not fully through. These are big porterhouse steaks, so they're gonna be a little bit longer. And depending on you know how you like your steaks, I know a lot of people are medium rare all the way with their steaks. I don't know, I don't mess around with the pink too much. So for me, I like it a little more towards medium well-ish. Um, just a little bit of pink still left. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We've been cooking a lot more meats and things this summer. We got a grill. So going back to my roots of cooking on the pan is kind of uh, just like old times at the apartment, even though we own a house now. But uh, we just let that sit, let that mix around a little bit. And then um, while that's sitting there, I'll talk about the, the sauce that we're going to make. So I've never made a peppercorn sauce before, but I've always wanted to. So this was like the perfect opportunity. And what we're going to need is we're going to need some red cooking wine that we have, some heavy whipping cream, some low sodium beef broth. And the low sodium is important because if you have high, like normal sodium, when it reduces down, you're going to have nothing but salt left. So go with the low sodium. And then we have some crushed up peppercorns that we're going to throw in there. Those are all going to mix up. Uh, and we're going to use the same pan that we're using for the steaks. So once we take the steaks out, we're going to let the steaks rest. And then we're going to make that sauce and everything's going to come together. So I can hear the steaks already sizzling, which is a beautiful sound. And now we're getting all the aromas going. And you can hear it, smell it. I know you guys can't smell it. It smells good. But uh, we're <laughs> going to flip it again. This side a little bit more browned, which is perfect. And get this. Try to grab it on the bone, flip that, mm. and there we go. We're going to let that one sit for another minute, probably. And then the other important thing, too, is if you notice, there's a lot of fat on the edge of these steaks. So towards the end, once we get everything all browned up and nice, I'm going to stack the steaks, put them towards the front, and then we're going to baste the steak a little bit. So what you can do is you can kind of lean your pan over here and take that butter and spoon it over the steaks and that'll get that flavor really going and even throw in the garlic on top kind of wish we grabbed a bigger pan but uh these steaks are a lot bigger than i thought but uh just keep spooning it over and then you can even rotate it do it the other way get it on the other side and then we'll keep flipping them like i said just about every minute or two just to make sure that you're not overdoing it we're going to flip it just like that. Flip that again. Alrighty. I think we're going to take a quick little break. We're going to let these cook and then we'll come back let the steak rest and we'll make our sauce. So we'll be right back. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, and the Lake Orion Lions Club, to name a few. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports. ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing to televise township and village meetings live and has provided the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. 
ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. Just sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. All right, so our steaks are resting. We've covered them in foil, so they're gonna cook just a little bit longer. It's important that you do rest your steaks for about, I don't know, five minutes or so usually. Um, just lets the steak cook a little bit longer, um, get all those juices into the meat. And uh, so in the meantime, while the potatoes are also almost ready, we're gonna start this sauce. Um, so this is, like I said, this is a peppercorn sauce that I've ever, never actually made before, but I'm excited to try it. I've always liked going out and eating peppercorn steak. So to try it myself, I've got some whipping cream, like we said, some red cooking wine, low sodium beef broth, and some peppercorns. So we need a half cup of the cream. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start with the red cooking wine. So we need a third cup of that. Throw that in there. And we're gonna use all the fat and the juices from the steak that we cooked to reduce everything down. That's what we're talking about. Nice and steamy. Now we're gonna take three quarter cups of the low sodium beef broth. Let that sit in there. We're gonna let that simmer for just about a minute or so. Let that get going. Stir it up a little bit. I don't know, Marie, are your potatoes done yet? I was just about to check, let's see. Yep, the fork is going right through them. So we're gonna turn this off and I'm gonna drain these. All right, I'll turn that fan off so that we can, <laughs> we can hear again. But uh, I don't wanna set the fire alarms off while we're at work, so. We're gonna keep stirring this around, letting this simmer. Marie's gonna take those potatoes off and uh, we're gonna start mashing those. I'm gonna let this sit for, like I said, just another minute or so. Then we'll add that whipping cream. We'll let that simmer for another minute and then we will uh, throw all the peppercorns in and then we're gonna serve it. And I don't know if you can see, but we're gonna have the big reveal of the steaks. They're sitting over here in the, uh, the foil. So I'm excited for that. All right, so what do we got to do with the potatoes? All right, so the potatoes are ready to go. They yep. are super easy to break apart nice with the fork. So, yeah, so I don't know if you can see it, but she put a fork in there and they just dissolve basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this hand masher that I have. I love this tool. And you're just going to simply squish the potatoes. And do that until they are all chopped up. You don't want any super big chunks so you're making sure you get it all nice and even because we're going to make these nice and creamy all right and while she's doing that i'm going to grab this whipping cream and like i said it's a half cup i'm going to grab that put that in there and now this is what's going to thicken up that sauce and we're going to let that kind of sit there and simmer while it all thickens up and it's gonna be glorious. So we'll throw that in there. Now we're gonna let it sit and turn up the heat just a little bit since that's some cold cream in there. Throw this in the sink. Let that get back up to temperature a little bit. We're gonna keep stirring it, making sure everything's getting in there. So now all the fatty juices from the steak, we got the rosemary, the garlic, the peppercorns are coming in. Oh, I'm excited. <clears throat> awesome. While you let that get warm and start simmering there, I'm going to take these mashed potatoes and we're going to start adding the flavor to them. So they're nice and mashed in this bowl here. And comes the fun part, adding all of our flavor. So we're just going to give it a little sprinkle of salt, a little sprinkle of pepper. Again, I love love some garlic so we're going to add that in measure with your heart <laughs> and then 
you're gonna just add a splash of milk. You don't wanna add too much because you don't wanna make them runny, but just a splash, less than a fourth of a cup. And then last but not least, can I have the butter there? Yep. A nice hearty, hearty scoop of butter. And what's nice is the potatoes are so, so warm that everything is just gonna melt right into them. And they're just gonna start looking creamier and creamier. And if you see chunks in there and it's too big for you, get your masher back out and just keep mashing. Otherwise, stir it all in. And meanwhile, my sauce is starting to get a little more thickened up, probably need maybe a minute more for it to get to the liking that I'm wanting. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention though with this peppercorn sauce is you can use alcohol actually. Now we are using red cooking wine, but the original recipe asks for brandy or cognac. So, you know, if you want to go that way, um, probably would bring a little bit more flavor. And again, we're, we're reducing the alcohol out. So not really going to get that alcohol taste. It's more for the, all the extras. But uh, as you can tell, sauce is starting to thicken up, which is lovely. Um, I think I'm actually going to take this off. I'm going to turn the burner off and uh, should settle and thicken up a little bit. And we'll grab those steaks. All right. With perfect timing because these mashed potatoes are nice and creamy. Okay. That's what I wanted to see. <laughs> All right, do you have a, a serving spoon? Oh, we're just going to lump them right on. All right, our steaks have been resting. So we're going to take the foil off. They're looking great. And there they are. Mm, those look so good. Nice and a little bit of a crust to them. And then you want to throw the potatoes on first, and then yeah, I'll throw this absolutely. over top of everything. Nice heaping. I don't think you can go wrong with some peppercorn sauce in your potatoes, to be honest. So get a nice heaping of potatoes. Oh, they look so creamy. I'm so excited. So, and then the final touch, we're just going to, I'm not just going to pour this in here. Get some on the Ooh. potatoes <laughs> and then get some on this one. Go for it. Pour all of it. All righty. Yum. There we go. Now, the only thing that kind of stinks is we can't get like a, a full reveal to the cutting it open, I guess. Can't I have this knife too. Oh, do you? Yep, okay. I've got we'll a try to make one. a nice cut for that, uh, that side camera. All right. For a final shot. Let's see. See if I did a decent enough job. Yep, that's about Ooh, what I like. Looks just good. a little bit pink. You just show that over mm. there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it is perfectly pink and it's a little bit be in there. Absolutely delicious. And All I right. don't know about you. Yeah, give it a try. <laughs> we have to have a taste test. Yes, we'll cut off two pieces. Grab two forks. Oh. So let's try right. it. All right. Here we go. Cheers. Mm. I'm proud of myself. I'll be honest. That steak is really good. But do you know what's even better than steak? Oh, I guess it's potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's good. All right. So there you have it. It's a steak, potatoes, a full meal that's, I would say, restaurant class um and we did it in what was it 25 ish minutes 25 minutes so nice and easy um you can do it for yourself if you want to do it on the grill you can as well you just make the sauce separately you don't get the fattiness um from the grill of course but uh you can throw some butter in the sauce and make that up and do it how you like but thank you for watching and uh we'll see you next time